most people, most people except the book we call the Bible is the Word of God. Right? It's still true. Most people accept that the Bible is the Word of God. So when they do read it, they automatically assume it's God attempting to enlighten them with regards to His divine will, His divine plan. Welcome to New Life. I'm Terry Knight, the pastor here at New Life Community Church. I thank you so much for turning us on, tuning us in. I trust, as always, that the Lord's going to bless you all over the place as we fellowship together here for the next several moments. We're going to jump right on into the back half of a teaching that we began a week ago. It's actually part of a series that we began some time ago. Before I do, I want to remind you of something that's going on here at New Life this weekend. Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, Lawrence Tuning is going to be with us. Lawrence is the author of the song, The Anchor Holds. He and his wife are going to be here sharing with us the story behind the song. And we want to invite you to come and be a part of that. Now, if you're listening to this program uh, later on Sunday evening, that's going to be kind of a mute point. But if you're catching us on Friday or Saturday, uh, then uh, you may be able to, to come on over and be a part of this tremendous service. God has really been moving, doing some neat things at New Life here lately. I'm pretty excited about that, uh, not the least of which is our midweek activities this week. With one of our good friends, our favorite evangelist in the whole world, was here with us sharing some about some of the activities uh, in and around the Asbury uh, Renewal, the revival services taking place there, as well as dipping way back into the history of it uh, perhaps 50 years ago looking at uh, 1970, and then bringing it forward to realize what God is still doing. Listen, God is still alive and well on planet Earth. He's moving. He's moving in the lives of people right here in Ridgeway, Henry County, Virginia, and the surrounding areas. For that, I am very thankful and uh, still very expectant of what God is going to do. Again, come on out and be with us Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Let me share with you a verse of Scripture to get us into the teaching for this particular uh, session, and it's from Galatians chapter 5, verse number 16, and the record puts it this way, So, I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Listen to that once again. Let the Holy Spirit be your guide your guide. And we're going to talk about that in this teaching, and I trust that the Holy Spirit would speak to your heart. Father, I thank you for each one listening in right now, and I pray by your Spirit, by your Word, you would speak to the hearts of men, women, boys, and girls. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, you give a listen. I'll be back here in just a little while to wrap things up. God bless. Maybe, what, three times in that 42 years we've had some conflict? Up to three times a day, I'm, I'm it. Yeah, yeah. I still love her. Committed to her. It's what I promised her over 42 years ago. Not all conflict has to lead to chaos. Not all conflict has to lead to division. But I really said that to come back to this. Most church conflict can be traced back to bitterness. 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 The original word is picria. Picria. You can tell people now you're peed off. <laughs> picria off. You're picriot off. It means an embittered, resentful spirit. Listen to me, church. A bitter spirit. 
a resentful spirit in Cain influenced him to kill his brother. Murdered his own brother. An embittered spirit, a bitter spirit, keeps some people sitting on one side of the sanctuary so that they'll be away from certain people on the other side of the sanctuary. I've been in churches like that. I have. You want me to give you some names? A bitter spirit, bitterness, can drive a wedge between people that once promised to love each other until death, but bitterness crept in. You know, the world has no power to eliminate such spiritual bondages. Sometimes they claim they do, but they do not. So what they do, they do what I I talked with you a little bit last week about relabeling certain bondages and calling them normal, creating and prescribing some placebo for it. Listen, the power of God can, can not only displace, but replace such maladies with power and deliverance. Amen. Now let me wrap it up with this this morning. There are multiple mechanisms that Holy Spirit uses to deal with unholy things in our life. Let me, there are four of them I want to give you real quick. Like, just walk with me through this. First of all is number six on your study notes. By the way, small group, I've already apologized to Stephanie this morning. I told her in small group Wednesday night that I had filled in study note number six last week. She said, no, you didn't. I said, yes, I did, but no, I didn't. Stephanie was right. Say, Stephanie was right. That's right. All righty. But I am giving you number six right now. Holy Spirit working supernaturally from within your own spirit. That is one of the ways, one of the mechanisms that Holy Spirit uses to deal with unholy things in our life. 1 Corinthians 2 and 10. If you have your Bible, look at that. I love this. But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now listen, in some respects, I want to suggest to you, this is probably the most common and yet the most missed an even misused manner of Holy Spirit conviction. Why? Simply because we do not respect or expect the blessing in as focused a way as we could. But I'm going to tell you, once you learn it, once you discover it, it will be a cherished benefit of the Jesus journey, that still small voice in you that speaks and empowers you supernaturally from within. Secondly, one of the mechanisms Holy Spirit uses, number seven on your study notes, Holy Spirit working in concert with the Word of God. The written Word goes in the blank. Working in concert with the written Word to instruct us. Paul inspired us through Timothy that all Scripture is given by inspiration. It's given by inspiration and it's profitable for teaching, for doctrine, for reproof, for all good things the Word is. But I want you to go with me to Hebrews chapter 4. I'm going to read this without commentary. Listen to this. Hebrews 4 and verse 12. For the Word of God is living and active. It's living and active, sharper than a double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of Him to whom we must give account. He reveals this 
through His written Word in concert with Holy Spirit. Now watch, this is probably the most commonly accepted way that persons come to receive or perceive what Holy Spirit is attempting to get through to them. Most people, most people accept the book we call the Bible is the Word of God, right? It's still true. Most people accept that the Bible is the Word of God. So when they do read it, they automatically assume it's God attempting to enlighten them with regards to His divine will, His divine plan. I'm talking about different mechanisms to deal with unholy things in our life. The third one is this. It's number eight on your study notes. Holy Spirit anointed and inspired persons, specifically apostles, prophets, evangelists, the hyphenated gift of pastor-teacher, anointed and inspired persons speak into us by our physical ears, which happen to be connected to our spiritual ears. Not a lot of people understand that. I'm talking about what we generally accept as preaching, exactly what I'm doing right now. God's Word coming forth by God's man or God's woman to hear us uh, or to us, rather, in the form of a sermon or a lesson or whatever you want to call it. Now listen, I love to hear anointed preaching and teaching. You understand anointed preaching and teaching? It's not just a speech. Because what I'm talking about this morning is not only behind it, it's all over it. It's responsible for it. I love anointed preaching and teaching. I have to admit to you, it's rare nowadays. Hear me out. I am very pro-education. I think a person should get all the education they need. All they need. But there are a lot of people today in a lot of religious institutions that think some document with some man's name on it is more important than the unction and the anointing of Holy Spirit in ministry. I'm telling you what I know. I love anointed preaching and teaching. It's very rare nowadays. And when it's put forth, watch this, it's probably the least cherished way that people prefer to receive conviction from God. Hmm. Pastor Terry, why would you say such a thing? For one, human beings can get in the way of this anointing. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers can get in the way of this anointing. And in fact, listen to me, New Life. This is for New Life. There are some people running around all over the country today claiming to be an apostle, and they're not. They don't have a clue. They're claiming to be a prophet, and they're not. They're claiming to be an evangelist, and they're not. Many claiming to be a pastor and a teacher, and they are not. They're depending on what some man told them as opposed to the gifting of Holy Spirit. Human beings can get in the way of this anointing. Quite often the speaker, listen to me, this full disclosure this morning, quite often the speaker is viewed not as God's mouthpiece, but just another lost soul attempting to judge the rest of us. I shared this with a small group Wednesday night. I happened to be in a certain place this past Tuesday night with some, some men I had just met. I don't know them. I just met them at that point in time. And something was mentioned about church. And one of the guys said, I don't go to church said, the last time I went, I felt like the preacher was talking right at me. 
Can I tell you something? Chances are the preacher didn't even know he was there. You mean you didn't know I showed up and you didn't know I was here? I didn't know what I said. Let me help you understand something. The Word of God is convicting. It's not coming from a man. It's not that man speaking right to you. It's Holy Spirit. Paul told the Hebrews that there's nothing hidden from him. Can I tell you something else? Say yes. You know, I have preached on subject A before, whatever, just fill in the blank. And at the end of the service, somebody comes out with a tear in their eye and just squeezing my hand and says, Pastor Terry, the Lord has really been dealing with me about something totally different. All week long, and that message really spoke to me. I'm like, oh, man, I must really be something. That's not what I'm thinking. What's going on there, church? It's Holy Spirit. Happens all the time. There's some of you come in here this morning, you had no intentions of the, of the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And you're sitting there, and your spirit's doing a somersault right now. You hoping I'm going to cut this off very shortly. <laughs> Please, Lord, give me some relief. Listen, you can run, but you can't hide. Holy Spirit's everywhere. He's everywhere. He's not just in here. He's everywhere. Let me, let me see if I can put a period on this. I'm talking about the Lord using people to speak to us, to show us some things. Do you remember over in Acts chapter 8, there's a fellow named Simon the sorcerer. Do you remember that story? The, the scriptures tell us that he believed and he was baptized. That's what the scriptures tell us. He believed and he was baptized. But he put his flesh first. He put his flesh first instead of learning about Holy Spirit power, and he offered the really, really for real anointed apostles some money believing that he could buy God's power. Look at your neighbor and say, Dodo. And we're talking about Simon, not your neighbor, okay? Immediately, Simon was rebuked by Peter. You can read about that in Acts 8 and verse number 20. See, sometimes people get in the way of the anointing, or they attempt to. Lastly, 1 Corinthians 3 and 3. Turn over there with me. 1 Corinthians 3, 3. Somebody needs to hear this. While you're looking, I'm going to tell you, I tried to cut this short this morning. The Lord told me to tell it, so I'm going to tell it. Paul said to the Corinthians, you are still worldly. There's a good old-fashioned term. You are still worldly. What's he talking about? Here it is. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you. Listen to me, church. If there's jealousy and quarreling among you, you are worldly, not walking by the Spirit. I'm trying to help somebody. Since there's jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? In other words, acting like unsaved not uh, people who are not spirit filled. He says, "Are you not acting like mere men?" And let me ask, what is it that they were jealous about? What is it they were fussing about? Look at verse four. For when one says, "I follow Paul," and another says, "I follow Apollos," are you not mere men? You understand what was going on here. Too often in today's world, we love to debate who it is that's the best orator instead or orator ever how you want to pronounce that instead of allowing holy spirit to speak to us by or through that individual can i help you understand that a stammering stuttering simpleton can be god's messenger after all you remember balaam who was directed by a jack a uh, 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 donkey you remember that? 
Jeremiah said this in chapter 5, verse 21. Hear this, you foolish and senseless people who have ears but do not hear. Jesus picked up on that in Matthew 13. They hear, but they don't really listen or understand. Some mechanisms that Holy Spirit uses. Can Holy Spirit speak to us from another brother or sister? From heart to heart, can He? Have you ever had another brother and sister speak to you? Heart to heart. Some of the most impactful and some of the most convicting moments in my life have come forth by properly formed words, read prayerfully formed words from the lips of a genuinely concerned brother, such as a prayer partner. That's why I love my prayer partners. Sometimes through an elder that cares enough to call you aside and say, hey, have you thought about this? Perhaps a deacon or somebody on a deacon level. Pastor, have you thought, I've been praying, the Lord's impressed us on me. Have you thought about you know, and every now and then, God uses the wife to speak into my heart. And she doesn't believe it, but it's true. God can even use the little wife to speak into your heart. Isn't it good to know that? And what sometimes God can use a total stranger. Total stranger. One more story. I know I've been long. I've been long on purpose. Maybe if I preach long enough, you'll fall out on the floor and we'll claim the Spirit slayed you this morning. <laughs> I was down in, uh, as Brother Harley would say, down at the Skeets one day when it first opened. Sheets. And I was pondering, contemplating, wrestling in my spirit about something going on right here as I prepared my coffee at their little coffee thing. And I felt this touch on my shoulder. And just, I thought I was in somebody's way. I just kind of turned, and there was a young man, happened to be an African-American young man, looked like he was maybe 35 years old, standing there. He started speaking, and he spoke to the issue that I was dealing with. And it just immediately I knew what was going on. I just kind of stepped back and he said, I'm so sorry if that offended you. I said, brother, you have no idea. Thank you so much for minding the Lord. Can you imagine going to Sheets and walking up to a total stranger, especially somebody that's not the same color you are, and saying something to them? It may seem off the wall to you. But the Holy Spirit led you heart to heart to share that. It can happen. The power. The power. Oh, let me tell you. Was that a powerful moment? Oh, yeah. It was powerful. I didn't fall in the floor and start foaming at the mouth, speaking, carrying on, swinging from the chandeliers. I'm going to tell you one thing. I almost felt like I left there walking up a few inches off the floor. It's powerful. Whatever it takes to be set free and empowered, can you be encouraged to do it? Beloved, we're going to wrap it up right there. And let me do it this way. Let me ask you this. Are you connected with some accountability partners? You know, quite often we hear conversation about God speaking to us, and people say to me, well, God hasn't spoken to me. You claim you hear these voices, you hear God. Listen, sometimes God speaks through other sources. He speaks primarily through His Word. That's why we preach and teach from this Word. God also uses other persons. In particular, the, the uh, apostles, prophets, the uh, pastors, the teachers, the evangelists, God uses those men to speak to us. I hear from them quite often. And regardless whether God speaks in a voice, a long voice, or speaks through His Word, or speaks through some other person, the message should be just as valid to us. 
when it is based on and based in, solidly in, the Word of God. Have you been listening? Have people been speaking into your life? I would suggest to you the very reason why I'm doing what I'm doing right now, and that is sitting before a television camera so that later on you can hear this and you can partner with us in this regard. You are hearing from me, hopefully, the words of God that would help you and draw you and encourage you and teach you and instruct you and empower you to go forth and put these words into practice. That's why we, we're here. One of the things that bothers this pastor so very much is this crowd today that's clamoring that you don't need the church to be a Christian. Now, I know what they're saying. They don't need uh, some building and so on and so forth. But really what they're saying without thinking about it is that they don't need that gathering of people that come into the building. And listen, you do need that gathering of people. It's called the ecclesia, the ecclesia the body of Christ, the called out ones. Biblically speaking, it is the body of Christ, and it is if you claim to be a part of uh, a follower of Christ, then you're a part of that body. And you need to find out what your role is and come together with others to assume that role. And there's some accountability involved in that, unlike anything else in this wide world. Now listen, I'm going to suggest to folks that if you aren't connected with the church, then you aren't connected with a body that has been given to hold you accountable and to encourage you and to put instruction into you. So just hanging out here like a, a fired-up ember that you take out of a, a fire and you lay that aside, pretty soon it will go out. That has been my experience with those who clamor, I don't need the church. I don't need that in order to be a Christian. They're usually very either lukewarm or very cold in their response to the things of God. Will you take that under advisement and give it a listen? Father, I thank you for each one listening in, and I pray that by your word you have encouraged us to find your power through Christ, by Holy Spirit, through your church body that you have given. Speak to each one, and we'll thank you. We'll praise you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, I have to get out of here. Let me remind you once again, Lawrence Tuning will be with us Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. That's our primary worship celebration as we conclude our first annual family encounter, 10 o'clock Sunday morning. We also have activities Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, small groups, youth, uh, New Life Youth Meet on Wednesday night, as well as our little children, KFC, the Kids for Christ. If you're looking for something like that, we may be just exactly what you've been looking for. Come on out and be a part of what's taking place here. Our contact information is there on the screen. Give us a holler. We'll be glad to uh, help you any way that we can. I am Terry Knight, and pastor of New Life Community Church, wishing you a great week. And remember, my friends, Jesus is coming back. Is he coming back for you?